Hi there, I'm Stephen and we're talking about instructional video. So this section will be all about research informed practices and how you can make a video better. So a lot of studies have been done into instructional video and they can basically show that in a lab this type of video is more effective than this type of video. So whether you've made your first video, you've made a couple or you haven't made any, this should be useful to give you a bit of an insight into how to make these really effective so that they're not merely boring lumps of video that your students won't want to engage with. All right, so the first thing you need to be aware of is some, a theory that we call cognitive load theory, and it also has another theory called multimedia cognitive load theory. And this basically says that uh, there's a concept called dual coding, which is that when information is going through the auditory, the hearing, and also through the eyes, it's more effective than just one or the other. So we call that dual coding, the two channels are working together. And this is also called the multimedia principle that basically says that video is better standalone than a simple worksheet and that's why we try to use it. Okay, so basically cognitive load, all that you need to know is that the higher the cognitive load, the more difficult tasks are for students. So by using video, we're lowering the cognitive load and by doing the principles that I'm going to talk about next, you're making the video as accessible and as engaging and as easy to follow as we are aiming to do. Okay, so the first principle is gesture. So gesture makes your video more, more effective, firstly, because it makes you a little bit more engaging to watch. Uh, but also the best way of thinking of describing something is that you're basically turning it into a metaphor or you're making it spatial. So you might say something like, well, on the one hand, there's this, and on the other hand, there's this, or I'm gonna take you through four different steps. And you can see how that's a lot more spatial and the students can actually picture that as a diagram. If you're a maths or a science teacher, you might want to look into using a stylus or a light board or a whiteboard uh, because it becomes very diagram heavy and you might need an aid to do that. But if it's just you talking or your subject isn't very diagrammatic, then you can just use your hands and use gesture as best as you can. Okay, so the most important thing in instructional video is you, the instructor, you, the teacher, talking to your students. So I'm going to give you a couple of little hints or pointers about how you can be a little bit more engaging, but whatever's natural to you, you're going to run with that. Okay, so the first tip's really easy. I like to use what I call an anchoring phrase. So before I speak, I say something that brings me into the room and makes me picture the students that I'm talking to. So it might be for you, uh, dear class, or for me, I say, hello, lovely people. And uh, just something to get me sort of hooked into who I'm talking to and to make it seem to me at least like I'm communicating with someone, even though I'm perhaps sitting in a room by myself. All right, the second tip is again, very easy. Uh, you just need to find somewhere where you're comfortable. So quite often I film videos in sort of a meeting room at school where I know that other people are outside and they're hearing me talking and watching it back it feels a bit uncomfortable feels a bit awkward and the warmth is stolen from my voice and I sound very cold so as much as possible find somewhere where you're comfortable you've got everything that you need in front of you uh, and you can actually feel like you're communicating with someone all right the third tip is really easy just picture your class picture your favorite student even though you don't have one but just picture who you're talking to and try and hold them in your mind as you speak. And this will make you a little bit warmer and a little bit more engaging with the camera. Okay, one of the most important things to think about is duration. So what I want you to do is picture a number in your head of how long a video should be. Okay, once you've done that, make it shorter than what you just thought of. So the only thing that we know for sure about duration is that shorter is better. If, if at all possible, chunk your videos to make them shorter and more digestible. Okay, a really important principle to keep in mind is what's referred to in the research as instructor presence. And this basically just means, if possible, include yourself in a video format. So rather than have sort of annotated PowerPoint slides where it's just your voice talking, that's probably more of a podcast than a video. Uh, so what you're gonna do is, as much as possible, include yourself. Quite often there's a lot of videos with the teacher in the bottom right hand corner presenting information as the main focus is the PowerPoint. And they've actually done eye study tracking research and what they find is about 90% of the time the eye rests on the teacher presenting anyway. So as much as possible, try and increase the real estate that you have in the videos that you produce. Okay, another thing that research has shown us is that pointing and arrows is very effective. So if you think of those kind of cliche YouTube thumbnails with lots of red arrows and red circles, uh, they've actually been able to establish that if you do that sort of thing in your video, then it will be more effective. So uh, sometimes we use a green screen for that purpose. So as a weather presenter might point to things, uh, but you can just do this in editing if you like and add a big red arrow pointing to the important information as you present. So another principle of cognitive load theory is what we call the redundancy principle. So if you're going to display images and text, then that is redundant uh, because they both essentially communicate the same thing. 
And by the same token, you want to minimize text, especially if you're going to read it aloud. So a good presenter will actually, if they're showing a piece of text on the screen, will pause and give people time to process that because reading is essentially an auditory process. So when you read something, you are actually reading it out loud in your head, which is then communicating it audit auditarily. So if you're speaking and asking someone to read, you very quickly realize that they can't do both. So keep that in mind if you're using a lot of text on your slides or on your information. All right, another principle is facial expression. So as much as possible, you're trying to be as effusive as possible. Be happy, be sad, change your tone. And the way that you change your tone is by changing the skeletal structure of your face. So you're going to have to use gesture for that. And the reason behind this is something that we call the parasocial effect. So if you think of your favorite TV or movie star, if you saw them down at the shops, you would feel an innate connection to them. And that's what we call a parasocial effect. So you're trying to leverage that so that your students feel like they have a really strong relationship with you uh, above and beyond what you get from class. So try and be as cheerful and positive as possible when you speak. All right, so in conclusion, this is what research tells us about effective instructional video, and we wanna be evidence-based in our teaching practice. So I would commend you to do a little bit of your own research, but as long as you follow these principles, we should be able to improve student learning by using video and these techniques.